one. Good evening. It is April 15th, 2020, and we're having a Wednesday evening Bible study for First Baptist Church of Walteria. Glad to have you join us by way of video. We're going to be working with our study tonight about victory in the Christian life, looking at the issue of commitment, and taking one of our lessons about that and thinking through how we can be committed and have victory in the Christian life. Uh, to begin with, we'll start out with a couple of missionary letters. So I'd like to read this uh, first one from Gary Needy Jones. They sent us a recent missionary letter. There are our stateside missionaries, although they do some ministry in the Philippines from time to time. Uh, it's April 2020. Dear family, friends, and supporter, this is our first prayer letter since the pandemic started. We pr trust this letter finds you rejoicing in God's promises and resting in his all-sufficient grace. I am thankful that after a number of procedures and a few months of waiting, my biopsy revealed I am negative for cancer. Until the last couple of weeks, I thought we were going to, I knew what we were going to do in the next six months. But things have changed. Edith and I were just recently going through 2 Corinthians 1, verse 1 through 10 recently, and Two verses that really spoke to us are verse 9 and 10, listed below. Verse 9 says, Yes, we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God who raises the dead. What we have learned from this situation, that's with the, the pandemic, and what I'm, is that we cannot trust in ourselves for anything. I'm not in control of anything. It was that way before the pandemic. It is that way in the midst of the pandemic. But I can and must always trust my Heavenly Father. I must trust Him for my needs, my family, and my future. Verse 10 in 2 Corinthians 1 says, Who delivered us from so great a death and does deliver us, in whom we trust that He will still deliver us. All followers of Christ have been delivered from past troubles too. Paul continued to know God's deliverance from trouble. Those who know Christ are also experiencing deliverance from present troubles. And Paul would be delivered from in the future from death itself. Everyone who truly knows Christ will also be delivered from death and the grave. As I think on those unchanging truths, my soul is lifted up, my mind becomes hopeful, hopeful and my heart rejoices in God. Because I choose to trust Him for the past, the present, and the future. I realize the best is yet to come. May God bless all of us, us all, as we take this journey together. In sincere Christian love, Gary and E.D. Jones. All right, I'm going to have my wife come up here. She'll read tonight a letter from the Taggarts in Arizona. Thank you for your faithful prayers and financial support. You are a big help in sharing the best news ever with Navajos and beyond here in Northern Arizona. We so appreciate you. We had a great Christmas outreach season back in December. At least 40 people made up professions of faith and one for help. At a remote school in one class, the teacher and whole class chose uh, Jesus. One Sunday morning, we went to Bird Springs Chapter House meeting, which was well attended as the Navajo president and his wife came top sign approval for a nursing home to be built within the chapter. A chapter is a community much smaller than a county. President Nets also spent time and talk with the people. He also shared that Mrs. T was a big part of him becoming a Christian. While attending Kenyatta Bible Church as a child, 
As a teen, he went on a mission trip with Dan and some others to Mexico. The president has started a summit of church leaders to help the churches with, uh, with a church, church site uh, needs, how to um, deal with issues that come up on the reservation and to encourage the believers. The team at FMN had been heavily involved in this effort. We are thankful for a believing Navajo president of this time. Um, Tomorrow is day of prayer out at Black Falls Bible Church. Then we'll be going and sharing a devotional. He is also been attending some classes provided by the Korean group as he can get away. The mission is still struggling financially, but did have a good board meeting last last month uh, our financial support has been about 80 percent and we are thankful for that if you would like to help in this area please make checks out to fmn with a note starting for dan t and mail to fmn p.o box aa Blackstaff, Arizona, A6002. All right, so the Taggers, who we do a special ministry of support for once a year, they are working with the Navajo Indians in Northern Arizona. I want to also share with you uh, uh, part of a letter from Bruce McLean for CARBC. He writes on April 3rd, Dear CRBC family, California Association of Regular Baptist Churches, the world has changed since my last email update, but our sovereign, faithful, caring God has not changed. We are two weeks into a stay-at-home mode with at least four more weeks to go. Even the hermits are getting restless. I've been praying for our pastors and churches who face the challenge of staying engaged in the lives of one another. Many of our church members are staying home from work, while others are working from home, and some have lost their jobs. Uh, a note about our annual conference in Sacramento, which is June 29th to July 20, excuse me, July 2, is still a go. We're continuing to plan until we hear otherwise. We're also asking every CARBC church to receive a love offering to help the CARBC with cost we will incur. Those include supplies, for uh, the sessions, costs for transportation, for children's and teen trips, and other expenses, which are part of an event like this. Please make your check payable to the CARBC in Santa Maria. The location will be the Hilton Arden West in Sacramento. One of the great benefits of the conference is networking with other pastors and lay leaders from around the country. I am very pleased with the response I'm getting to the conference going to Sacramento in this year. Please check the GRB website for information. Accommodations may now be booked and online registration is available. And he goes on to say, we have several churches seeking a pastor. Faith Baptist Church in Strathmore, Santa Clarita Baptist Church, Santa Clarita, Cornerstone in Hemet. Filipino International Baptist Church in Elk Grove and Faith Baptist Church in Stockton. Uh, he did not mention it, but we also have the Wilmington Church here in our area, all needing uh, help. Uh, have no no pastors at this time. Um, so he goes on to finish it. Called to California, Bruce McLean, CRBC representative. So we have several of our missionaries. And I need to read and keep us up to date on from time to time. Uh, tonight, I do want to do as I normally do, just give us updates on some 
things happening in the world around us for a few minutes, and then we'll get into our Bible study. Uh, and I like to have uh, just a few notes about things going on in the world around us that are of interest to us as, as believers. Uh, and so uh, a few of those um, include uh, in China, uh, they have, uh, we need to pray for churches in China. Uh, there is uh, increasing persecution at this point, uh, and crosses are being torn down off Christian churches. As they're on identification mark as a Christian church, and they're being torn down off Christian churches. Additionally, right now, uh, at least in some parts of the country, I'm not sure if it's all of China, they have banned the use of online church services. Uh, it's... The, the epidemic there in China has forced Christians to stay home, and so they have banned even the online church services. And uh, <clears throat> they're not allowed to. Uh, they said only groups holding state-issued licenses can stream their religious services online in China. Uh, so they have been blocked from even doing it online services there in China. We need to pray for our Chinese brothers and sisters there in various parts of the country. Um, additionally, uh, in Nigeria, I have a note of uh, continued murder of Christians in the country of Nigeria as government continues to look the other way and I'm not taking too much note of it. Uh, it is estimated that since about 2015, uh, about 6,000 Christians have been murdered in the country of Nigeria. Uh, by Muslim uh, activists. We need to pray for our Christian brothers and sisters in Nigeria. The third item is in uh, Kentucky this last week. Uh, Marysville uh, Baptist Church parking lot um, and personal service churchgoers were met with nails on the road or in their parking lot. And the police uh, recorded license plate numbers. And the governor threatened a 14-day quarantine for all attenders. Um, additionally, Louisville, Kentucky's uh, Christian church, was told they could not have even drive-in services where they would stay in their cars. They said they cannot. They were told it was unconstitutional. They immediately took it up to court. And last Saturday, before Easter services, the federal judge ruled that banning drive-in services was unconstitutional. Uh, anyway, this is harassment against Christian, uh, uh, <clears throat> because if you're in the car and you're not, uh, and they, I think they even had six foot distance even from the other cars, so in the car, you're not even next to others, um, that's uh, unconstitutional, not even be allowed to park there. Uh, in Greenville, Mississippi this last week, those who attended parking lot services were fined $500 and, uh, however, the mayor of the town in Greenville uh, rescinded those fines on Monday following those services. Another threat against Christians. Uh, in California, uh, this is not regarding the coronavirus, but a man who uncovered planned parented um, baby parts for profit scandal. He found out, uh, he found, and he videotaped, them as leaders in Planned Parenthood were talking about selling um, parts of babies that have been aborted, selling them for money, and uh, he found out about it, he videotaped it, recorded it, and wouldn't you know what Planned Parenthood is strong enough, they were able to turn it against their enemies, um, and uh, he has ended up with 10 felony charges against him instead of should be uh, murder charges against Planned Parenthood. Uh, but it's uh, that's one of those organizations that our government supports, which is in the business of murdering babies. And uh, it's interesting. Well, we need to pray for brace issues. We always want to pray for issues in our country regarding harassment of Christians, issues about promoting abortion instead of life, issues regarding promotion of sexual sin instead of sexual purity, and um, an opposition to traditional marriage, and opposition to Israel instead of uh, blessing of Israel. And we always want to pray for those kind of things. 
Well, tonight, as we get into our lesson, uh, I'm just going to read you the words of a hymn. Uh, some of you are aware that hymn is called Work for the Night is Coming, and those words for the first verse go, Work for the Night is Coming, Work Through the Morning Hours, Work for, While the Dew is Sparkling, Work Mid Springing Flowers, Work When the Day Grows Brighter, Work in the Glowing Sun, Work for the Night is Coming When Man's Work is Done. That song was written over a hundred years ago by a lady named Anna Walker. Anna Walker was born in England and then moved to Canada. She was born in England in 1836, moved to Canada with her family. And when she was 18 years old, living in Canada, she wrote the words to this song, basing it on Jesus' words in John 9, 14, which says, I must work the works of him that sent me. While it is day, the night cometh when no man can work. So work, for the night is coming. Well, some Christians believe in that Christianity is a passive life. Uh, we must simply rely on God for everything. Uh, if we live diligently, it goes against the direction of God. This is a false belief. Uh, God, in his word, leads us to a balance of things. And so the balance of God's pattern is he works and we work. Uh, both of those go hand in hand. Uh, and we're tonight talking about how a victorious Christian can follow God as we are farmhands, workers for Jesus, laborers in his fields. Let me pray. We'll get into our lesson. The only Father, we ask that tonight you'd help us guide, uh, help guide us as we seek to grab hold of your truths about being a laborer for Jesus Christ. Thank you for your truth. It is valid. It stands true no matter what kind of conditions we are in. And we can trust you with that. We do pray for our uh, three missionary uh, people that we mentioned just briefly. We think of Gary and Edie Jones. Bless them and their ministry. We do pray for the CARBC, for Associate Regional Baptist Churches, with Bruce McLean. And we also pray for the Taggarts and their ministry with the Navajo Indians. Bless each of them with their ministries. Give them good health. Strengthen them in what they do. We also pray for the challenges that are facing Christians across the world today. We ask that you would have uh, Christians be helped to follow you. Uh, stand for you, stand for what's right, uh, not in rebellious attitudes, but just stand for what's right and oppose what's wrong. Uh, Lord, we thank you for the privilege of knowing you as Savior, Savior and also for the privilege of following your word, in Jesus' name, amen. All right, well, God has given us several pathways to victory. Uh, we have looked uh, these in from previous weeks and months, and so those are the power of the Bible. One is one of the pathways for victory is getting into God's Word. The second way is uh, the power of the gospel changes our lives. Another pathway of victory is prayer. As we pray for things, God gives victory and helps us with the challenges that we face. Uh, another way is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit helps give victory so we can be reminded of God's truths and live the Christian life more effectively. He comforts us, encourages us, reminds us of various things. Then we have the power of our church family and the, the blessing of that. We talked about that. And then we are talking about the power of personal commitment, which is another pathway of victory in the Christian life. So we are in that last one, number six. And we have talked already about ways of commitment and the way of personal commitment one of those is being a soldier for Christ. We've talked about that. We've talked about being an athlete for Jesus. And tonight we're talking about being a farmhand, a labor in God's fields for Jesus Christ. And as we do that, God gives us victory in our life as believers. All right, our main passage tonight is 2 Timothy 2, verse 6. We're going to take it from there. And then we'll go with some additional passages, learning about... Uh, being a laborer for Jesus Christ, essentially a farmhand in God's fields. All right, 2 Timothy. Find a Bible nearby. You can look up our passages. And 
learn about God's pattern, that God, way God wants to help you to be committed. So, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 6. The hard-working farmer must be first to partake of the crops. This is our basic passage. The hard-working farmer must be the first to partake of the crops. It's the laborer who labors in the farming field. And uh, <clears throat> my first job was many years ago. I uh, lived in Colorado, and I worked on a small farm in Westminster, Colorado. I earned 50 cents an hour. Yep, that's right, 50 cents an hour. That was below minimum wage in Colorado at the time, but it was allowable, we were told, because Colorado allowed uh, people to be paid under minimum wage if those items were not sold over the state line. I don't know if it's true or not. That's what we were told. But it was okay. We were junior high boys, and we just wanted some money, and we could do things together. There was four of us, and we ranged uh, our grade levels. I think we're seven, eight, and nine. So we were young junior high boys, and uh, if we would put in 50 to 60 hours a week there on the little farm there, uh, we would come off with maybe 40. If we got lucky, we might even have as much as uh, $50 a week. And for kids back in 1975 or 76, that was a big deal. And especially for junior high boys, that was like heaven, you know, uh, being rich. Uh, but there were uh, two other workers beside us, four guys, and uh, we helped work the farm. So I think uh, basically a total of six workers. We harvested, uh, I'm just trying to think of the things we harvested. I came up with lettuce, red cabbage, long green onions, cucumbers, yellow squash, green squash, parsley, beets, rhubarb, and probably a couple other vegetables that I'm not remembering right now. But we had a, had a small farm, uh, I don't know, maybe a, two or three blocks long, this sort of a square area of land about three blocks by three blocks, the owner. And uh, if you don't know what rhubarb is, some of you maybe have never heard of rhubarb. Uh, rhubarb is basically considered a vegetable, but interesting, back in 1947, the state of New York voted to legally say it is a fruit because people would cook it as a fruit kind of item for their pies, rhubarb pies. If you've never had a rhubarb pie, I think they're wonderful. I happen to like rhubarb pies. Well, I worked as a menial farmhand. Just worked on this little farm. I worked there for three years as a junior high boy. As a farmhand, I learned the importance of weeding and of harvesting. I was not involved in either the planting or the watering, but each of those actions are important to a good harvest. Tonight, we're going to talk about Christians being farmers or farmhands. So the question is tonight, when we say a Christian is to be a farmer, well, what does that mean? That's the question tonight. When a Christian is to be a farmer, what does that mean? Good question. We have several ideas we'll look at tonight uh, from several passages. We'll start off with the first one. So here in 2 Timothy 2.6, again, it says, the hardworking farmer must be first to partake of the crops. Number one, I am to be involved in diligent service or work for the Lord. That's what I'm involved as a farmer. I'm to be involved in diligent service for the Lord. There it says the hardworking farmer, the hardworking farmhand. And uh, in the King James, I believe it uses the words the husbandman. It really means a farmer. Takes care of the fields, of the soil, and he labors. And so we are to be involved in diligent service for the Lord. Uh, and so this involves labor, it involves strain. It could be of various kinds of labor that's involved as a, as a godly person. Uh, sometimes it's very difficult in the study of God's word, in the service of the Lord, uh, memorizing, witnessing, uh, learning. It's effort. It involves effort of learning and, and growing, but that's what we're supposed to do. So this is number one. I am involved in diligent service or work for Jesus Christ. 
Number two, I am to be involved in serving the Lord by going into the harvest fields to look for people who are open to God's truths. Turn with me, if you would, to Matthew chapter 9, verse 37 to 38. Matthew chapter 9, 37 through 38. Matthew 9, 37, it says, Then he said to his disciples, Jesus spoke, The harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. I am to be involved in serving the Lord by going into the harvest fields to look for people who are open to God's truths. Part of my life as a believer in the Lord is to interact with other people, some of them who are not believers, and just pray that God will work in their hearts. Some of them will become open to God's truth from time to time. And that's what God wants me to do. I want, I'm to go. What's the harvest field? It's, it's all the fields around me, wherever I'm at. Uh, whatever city, whatever countryside I'm at, wherever there's people, God wants me to interact with people from time to time. Of course, we're under uh, some restrictions right now and uh, stay at home um, and you can't be closer than six feet uh, except for your family members. Uh, but are there ways to share the gospel to communicate with people even this time? Absolutely. We do that by video. We can do by email. We can do a phone call. You can text people. Uh, you can contact them a variety of ways. You don't especially have to be with them physically in person. But there can be a variety of ways that are still uh, apropos, uh, appropriate, and even restricted times. God wants us to connect with people to share his truth. So you not, might be thinking about that. How, who is somebody I need to connect with at this time who's not a believer? And how can I do that? Maybe an email, maybe a phone call or a text. Whatever you can do to connect in some kind of way. Or maybe that's the person in the store who's uh, struggling because they're overworked right now in a grocery store and they're just uh, stressed out. Look on their name tag, find out their name and just mention their name and say, thanks, Susie. You know, let them feel that somebody appreciates them. Uh, so do that. Maybe you'll bless somebody's heart. All right. A, a third item. Some of us are to plant or sow spiritual seeds into the lives of people. Turn with me to John chapter 4. John chapter 4. I'm going to read from 35 through 38. John 8, 35. says... John 4, chapter 4, verse 35, it says, Do you not say there are still four months, and then comes the harvest? Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields, for they are already white for harvest. And he who reaps receives wages and gathers fruit for eternal life, and that both he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together. For in this the saying is true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap for that which you have not labored. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labors. Number three, some of us are to plant or sow spiritual seeds in the lives of people. Okay, Some of us are seed planters. We bring those seeds of spiritual insights and truths in their lives. We plant seeds here or there. By the way, we live how we speak of Jesus Christ and his word. So we are to be planters. Uh, some of us do that. Uh, maybe not all of us. Maybe all of us do from time to time. But there are different ways you and I are involved in being a farmhand or laborer for Jesus Christ. Secondly, uh, from this passage, number four, some of us will reap the fruit of spiritual seeds that have grown and blossomed. Some of us are going to be planters 
and some of us are going to be reapers. We will reap those harvests. Maybe somebody else planted the seed. It's up to you and you opportunity to reap the fruit of that seed that has been planted. Uh, a number of years I took a, a, a years ago I took an evangelism course called Share Jesus Without Fear. It said at that time, which was about 20 years ago, it said that a person shares the gospel and at least I think their concept was here in the United States, you need to share it seven times with a non-person before that, on the average, before a non-Christian would uh, respond to the gospel. I don't know if it's the same today or not. But that means people are planting seeds in the lives of others who are non-believers, and eventually, by that seventh time on an average, they would come to know Jesus as their Savior. Somebody plants the seeds multiple times, and finally, a harvest comes. All right, the important point of this is both those who plant the seeds and those who reap the harvest are both important. You can't say, okay, we only planters are good, not the people who harvest, or oh, I want to be a harvest, but I don't need anybody to plant it. We're, we just want to go harvest. No, you have to have both. You have a planter, people who plant seeds and the harvesters, and we may each do that from time to time. Uh, so both of those are important parts of serving the Lord and laboring, the planter and the harvester. All right, number five here, turning to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 6 through 9. 1 Corinthians. All right, again, we want you to listen to these ideas and think through these ideas about the farming ideas here. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. Now he who plants and he who waters are one, and each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are God's fellow workers, we are God's field, you are God's building. Okay, so this is point number four. Some of us are to water the spiritual seeds. Somebody may plant them, somebody else comes in a watering and helps those seeds to be watered and, and to start to grow better, but they have to have that, they need water. Uh, you can plant the seeds, if there's no water, they're probably going to die. So in, in the lives of people, we need the planters and people to come out and encourage that seed to grow through witness, lives that are living for Christ, sharing God's love, God's truth, various ways. So a waterer and a planter are both important. All right, number six. Again, from the same passage, God gives the increased and the harvest. Uh, God is the giver of the increase in the harvest. Okay? We are the, the planters, we are the waterers, and uh, we are the helpers for those seeds to, to grow and blossom. But God is the one who gives the increase, and he's the one who gives the harvest. Sometimes people uh, become very frustrated because they are not able to reap the harvest that they expect. Uh, others, you say, well, that person witnesses, everybody they witness to, they become a believer in Christ. Well, why does that happen? But it doesn't happen when I do it. Uh, I don't know. But God gives the increase. And so we need to just relax, do our part, and let God give the increase in his time. And trust God for his time with different people and for them to respond to Jesus. So, uh, the next item, again, uh, from this passage, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, every person who serves in God's harvest fields, whether those that sowing seeds, watering, or harvest, every person is important. No one who serves is insignificant. Okay? Sometimes people get jealous because they're not as good as somebody else. They want to be that position, they're not position, that position, whatever. Uh, we need just to forget about the jealousy and say every person who serves is significant and in the farm world 
and when you farm and, and, and you plant things and you have a harvest of those vegetables or fruits, every person is important. Whether it's a waterer, a planter, a person who has to come by, like I had to do when I was working on the farm, I had, we had to do weeding from time to time, uh, or the harvesting from time to time. Every person is important. Uh, not any, no one who serves is insignificant. Everybody is significant. All right. So that's very important. Every person is significant. Number eight, every person is rewarded in their labor for God according to their own effort. And we see that here again in this passage. Verse eight, now he who plants and he who waters are one. Each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. Okay, you get a reward according to your labor. You are not rewarded according to what you didn't work for. Okay, there are no freebies of God saying, okay, I'm just going to give you an extra thing here, uh, even though you didn't work for it. God's plan is you get rewarded for what you work for. Okay, work hard. God will bless you with that. Don't work at all. God's not going to give you any reward. Okay, You're rewarded according to your labor and your efforts. And so God's plan is that we are rewarded. There in 1 Corinthians 3, if you look down farther, it talks about uh, that foundation and building and reward. So I'm just going to read that. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 10. According to the grace of God, which is given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another builds on it. But let each one take heed how he builds on it. For no other foundation can anyone lay other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Okay, now, if anyone, this is the part about your rewards. If anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become clear for the day. The day of judgment will declare it because it will be revealed by fire and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work which he has built on it endures, he'll receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned, burned up like hay or stubble, it will, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved yet so as through fire. So God says, you will receive a reward. Uh, uh, maybe your war, reward is just simply to go to heaven because you've done nothing uh, in terms of labor for the Lord. Uh, but if you have done labor for the Lord, God blesses you according to what you have worked for. Okay, You work, God blesses you, and he gives you a reward according to how you have worked. So again, every person is rewarded in their labor for God according to their own effort. Let me just uh, summarize here what we've talked about tonight. It's this. Every Christian is called to serve the Lord in spiritual ways. Some of us plant or sow spiritual seeds. Some of us water the seeds. Some of us reap the harvest. Uh, each person is important. God gives the ultimate harvest. All of his laborers, God's laborers, will be rewarded for their work, according to their effort. Okay? According to their effort. Just a summary of just what we've talked about. God wants us to serve him, and the picture is, I am, have victory in my life as I serve the Lord as a farmhand, as I make the effort to serve, whether it's by planting seeds, by watering, by <clears throat> harvesting, whatever way that is, God wants me to serve, and I have victory in my life as I serve, okay? I don't have victory in my life as I just sit, but as I serve. Okay, so just one simple application, application is, how are you serving? I know this is a hard time right now to ask this question, but uh, we need to ask the question of ourselves, how am I serving the Lord at this period of time? And you need to be thinking about that. How can I serve? How can I connect with people who need to know Jesus Christ? Am I praying for those friends of mine, neighbors of mine, uh, uh, co-workers, classmates of mine who need to know Jesus as their Savior? Uh, can I say something to them? Can I text them? Can I email them? 
Can I call them on the phone to talk to them about uh, Jesus or my faith or about Easter? Uh, and then what can I do in terms of uh, planting those seeds? What can I do in terms of living my life in an honorable way? Again, I mentioned those times in the grocery store where the, those workers are packed out in doing things. I need to pursue uh, uh, kindness with them. Look at the name tag again. Look at the name tag. Say good word, okay? Think of a good word. It makes a big difference if you would do that. All right. Those are some things in terms of serving the Lord. We want to do that together. <clears throat> well, tonight I want to close with a song that I mentioned there at the beginning. Work for the night is coming. We'll sing one verse together. You may know this, may not know this. But this has to do with what we're talking about. We want to work because there's a time when the night is coming. And we won't be able to work anymore. Okay, we'll be taken to heaven. Uh, however that is. But we want to work for the night will come. But right now, we, uh, we want to serve the Lord as our opportunities can come together. All right. So again, you got the words there here on the screen. If you're watching this by way of video, hopefully you can uh, uh, see those on the screen. Work for the night is coming. Work through the morning hours. Work while the dew is sparkling. Work mid-springing flowers. Work when the day grows brighter. Work in the glowing sun. Work for the night is coming. And man's work is done. All right. We'll sing that a cappella. Just a short verse there. All right. Work for the night is coming. Work through the morning hours. Work while the dew is sparkling. Work mid springing flowers. Work when the day grows brighter. Work in the glowing sun. Work for the night is coming when man's work is done. Let me pray and we'll close our Bible study this evening. Dear Holy Father, thank you for the privilege of being your worker in your fields and the fields of the world around us that are white to harvest. People need to know Christ. Some of them, their hearts are open at this time. Some of them, they're not. Lord, you know who they are. Help us be your witness by our life and by our words that they can know Jesus better and some of them will turn their lives to you at this time. We ask you would uh, work in the challenges that are facing our country right now with the coronavirus. We ask you give wisdom to our leadership in Washington, D.C. We'll guide our president as you speak in your word to pray for uh, those who are in authority, guide him to have wisdom from on high how to deal with this. And uh, we ask God that you would direct, that we would turn our hearts to you. You are God over all. Help us to trust you through the challenges we face. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, tonight's been a, a night where we can say we want to follow the Lord. And let me encourage you, stay healthy. Stay safe, get into God's word, take time with prayer, and follow the Lord with God. Nothing is impossible. Good night.